As we become a more socially conscious society, sometimes we have to take a look at our previous monumental mistakes. Join us as we have a look at some of the most controversial statues in the world. Princess Diana Princess Diana is one of the more universally adored royals, and her generous, brilliant life has a right to be commemorated. However, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of planning behind her monument. In 2004, there was a large fountain made in honor to the princess, and after the queen did the marvelous unveiling, it stood as a strong testament to a wonderful woman. For about two weeks, that is. Three people would trip and fall while walking on the slippery channel, and had to be hospitalized. Shortly after the terrible incident, the pumps that provided the bubbling fountain stream got clogged with leaves, and this would result in a tremendous flood of the nearby park. Once the pumps were then fixed, the fountain was again reopened, but Hyde Park authorities wanted to ensure that these issues didn't happen again. So in 2005, they removed the nearby grass and, well, they paved over it all, so it just kind of looks like a parking lot. Crazy Horse Just 17 miles from Mount Rushmore is the world's largest mountain carving. The colossal sculpture has been under construction ever since 1948 and is supposed to be finished somewhere around the year 2120. The image? Well, it's of Crazy Horse, an important Lakota leader who beat Custer's 7th Cavalry at the Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876. This amazing strategist and leader of people is commemorated for his astounding success, and it's offending just about every single member of the Sioux. Considering how Crazy Horse worked to preserve the natural splendor of the Black Hills against the invasion, it would absolutely be against his wishes to deface them, especially with a giant statue of himself. Many of the Sioux believe that the statue is polluting the landscape, and it goes absolutely against everything that Crazy Horse stood for. Just as well, the enormous eyesore is actually on Sioux land. In 1948, when the plans were being drawn up, the Native Americans were completely ignored and had absolutely no say in a monument that was dedicated to this great man. Peruvian Jesus in Peru, there's a statue of Jesus that stands 120 feet high. When Alan Garcia stepped down as president in 2011, he would donate $36,000 to the statue that would bless Peru and protect Lima. Now, it also bears mentioning that an unknown Brazilian businessman also donated over $1 million to the statue. Maybe it just kind of reminded him of home. And as far as famous South American Jesus statues go, this falls just a tad bit short of Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. A lot of Peruvians were justifiably upset at the unveiling, citing Brazil's growing encroachment on other South American countries. Crazy Girls Now, you have to work pretty hard in order to be the most photographed statue in a city like Las Vegas, and the Crazy Girl sculpture certainly draws the eye. That's because it's cast from real life, and this 1,700-pound sign used to adorn one of the oldest, topless burlesque reviews on the strip. The sign above reads, no ifs, ands, or is very clever, in a pretty cheesy way, albeit. And it gets a lot of shots, and, well, rubbings. It's not everyone's favorite, and the crazy girls have been moved to Planet Hollywood in order to continue their reign as a long-standing Vegas icon. Tsar Located in Russia, the gargantuan statue of Tsar Peter the Great towers over the city of Moscow, and it looks pretty ridiculous. Now, essentially, it has the Tsar standing behind the wheel of a colossal ship while clutching a golden scroll. At his feet? are other lesser ships. This gigantic eyesore is taller than the Eiffel Tower and weighs a whole lot more as well. Moscow residents have been critical of the monument for decades because of its size and extremely bizarre depiction of the Tsar. Oddly enough, however, the feeling was somewhat mutual. Peter the Great was said to have hated Moscow, preferring instead St. Petersburg. So who really knows what the future holds for this ridiculous statue? Martin Luther King 
Great people are often immortalized in stone and steel and other forms, but sometimes these well-meaning creations offend you more than they honor the person. Martin Luther King Jr. has a 30-foot statue of his likeness, and while the pose is commanding, the quote that's written on the bottom has been heavily criticized. The quote is paraphrased and reads, I was a drum major for justice, peace, and righteousness. Now, without the context, the quote does sound, to a whole lot of people, to be a little bit arrogant. Maya Angelou, an acclaimed poet and author, heavily criticized the words, mentioning that they were just part of a sermon, and that cutting out the surrounding words actually changed the entire meaning of the quote. Martin Luther King Jr. was a hero, but he was much more humble than his intense statue actually depicts. Angelou, however, was in favor of altering the quote to add the missing pieces, but the sculptor was forced to remove it entirely so as to keep the structural integrity of the monument together. The fact that the sculptor was also Chinese rather than a United States citizen and not an African American also became a source of conflict. Yasukuni War memorials do exist all over the world and can be a very important thing for a country to recognize the heroes that fought to ensure their future. However, it's not always a great idea to commemorate everyone who fought for their country. Japan has a complicated and somewhat questionable military history, and China and Korea have suffered many human casualties under Japanese militarism. The Imperial Shrine of Yasukuni is a sacred place in Tokyo, and it honors those who have fallen in war. The issue, however, is that it also honors 14 war criminals. That's right, 14 of the publicly revered dead were actually leaders that were convicted by an allied tribunal for committing war crimes. Now naturally, there's a bit of an outcry about the nature of the shrine, and politicians in Korea and China urge Japan not to whitewash its history. It's understandable to thank the heroes of your past for their service, just make sure they actually weren't monsters. Franco Francisco Franco created the Valley of the Fallen Monument after the Spanish Civil War, and it's a gigantic tomb that's drilled into a mountain with a colossal granite cross that's perched on top. While this splendid burial chamber works to honor the military dictator, he's not exactly everyone's hero. Now, he did employ concentration camps, forced labor, and executions which resulted in the deaths of about 400,000 people. Franco was actually an intense fascist, and other statues of him have been taken down. As it turns out, a gigantic tomb built into a mountain is actually pretty hard to dismantle, though. Oddly, however, the Valley of the Fallen is located at the site of a large battle between Madrid and Segovia, and while 40,000 bodies littered the grounds, only Franco and the like-minded noble Antonio Primo de Rivera are buried in the tomb. The monument has been publicly decreed, and security on it is rather tight. Anti-fascists tried to blow it up in 1999. But considering that Franco even used slave labor to build the gigantic grave, can you really blame them? Columbus Christopher Columbus is in a lot of history books for discovering a number of countries, but he's also pretty famous for decimating native populations and using slavery. While there are issues with New York's Columbus statue, in Santo Domingo things are borderline satirical. The monument is a gigantic lighthouse capable of blasting a cross-shaped laser, and that laser can be seen for up to 70 miles. As if this wasn't an issue enough, it did end up costing much, much more than expected. Locals of the Dominican Republic had to contribute an extra $60 million for this monument. The history experts out there might also have noted that the Dominican Republic isn't really a huge fan of Columbus as well. Many do blame him for the extermination of the entire original population and the importing of slaves to the island, which was Spain's first New World colony. When locals decided to peacefully protest the creation of the structure, two of them were actually shot dead in the streets. Not that it wasn't what Columbus was all about, but perhaps the government could have done something better and, well, less evil with the funds. Zyklon 
In 2005, Berlin unveiled the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe, also known as the Holocaust Memorial. It stands near Brandenburg Gate, a famous Germanic site, as a way to deeply express Germany's remorse and sorrow at the actions that were taken under Hitler's regime. It's a solemn and mournful monument, measuring about 6,500 feet, and is comprised of 2,711 slabs of concrete on a field. The monument, as you might have guessed by now, isn't exactly the issue. The issue and problem is with the construction company. In 2003, it came out that Degusa, the company hired to build the monument, was actually once a company called Degesh, which had a rather different history with the murdered Jews. Degesh was the firm that delivered Zyklon B the poisonous gas that was used to physically kill the Jews, directly to the concentration camps. When the memorial's trustees were notified of this, they were a little bit more than upset. Construction immediately stopped, and they had to find a new company. While many older German companies and businesses actually worked with the Nazis, this kind of takes it just a little bit too far. With summer coming to a close and autumn approaching with Halloween soon to follow, it's curse season. Curses have been around for as long as humans have been superstitious. Believe in them or not, you can't deny the facts. These curses range from simple bad luck all the way up to death. Most of the time an object is cursed and those who touch it are cursed themselves, though this isn't always the case. 